almost speechless. Gulf of Mexico. Haven't been here for a while. Love it. This is just great. It's a lot like uh, San Padre Island uh, near Corpus Christi. You just drive up to the beach and you can camp here. And the weather is just so beautiful right now. Now I should celebrate with a bottle of beer, but I think I have to settle with a bottle of sunscreen right now. That is bright. After settling in and spraying skin, it was time to test the waters. Better have your shades on or my legs will burn your retinas. I know it's only February, but I'm brave. A little warmer on the Mexico side, I think. Where my crocs were heading. You can't help notice that the beach is riddled with seashells of every shape, form, size, and color. It's one of the reasons why this particular campsite is so popular. But just watching the sun glisten off the waves is good enough for me. Just as the sun started going down, a swarm of insects appeared. They looked like mosquitoes, but I think they're midges. They seemed more attracted to the trailer than me, so I wandered off to the beach. The red eye of the sun was ready to go to sleep, but not without passing the light show off to the clouds. And of course the water had to join in as well reflecting a crimson glow in the ripples. The finale wraps up as the lights flicker on a distant power plant. Time to call it a night. Later the next morning, I take my position to see what the new day will bring. It doesn't get any more peaceful than this. My start of the trip was a little cold, a little stormy. I had to camp with the cows, camp in the rain. But this makes it all worthwhile. It's called Rutherford Beach and it's in Louisiana.
don't know if you can see in the distance or not, but there's a few RVs in the background. It's probably about three miles. You can camp wherever you want. I wouldn't get too close to the water, of course. But as far as facilities go, there are some porta potties right at the beginning at the other end. And there's a place to empty your trash. Other than that, you're left on your own. I noticed when the wind came from the south, the water seemed just a little warmer. And more birds were attracted to its shores. It also helped the waves bring more gifts ashore. I think it was time to see what had drifted in during the night. But not everything cast ashore was beautiful, and some things just kinda stunk. Was this still creature another casualty of the sea? I had to find out for sure. Nope, alive and kicking. and not very happy to be disturbed. I know you shouldn't tease the wildlife, but I was just pointing my finger. I'm sure if he wanted to, he could give me a pinch I'd never forget. But fortunately for me, he just liked to do the backwards crawl. Time to leave him be so he could go back to whatever he was doing before some annoying human came by and interrupted his day. You might have noticed my collection of seashells. This is about 20 minutes of walking up and down the beach. There's so many here. All day people are going back and forth all along the waterfront with their buckets and their bags picking these up. There's some really cool ones. I like the, the detail on some of these, these iridescent ones. It's just amazing how beautiful these are even in death. I'm not going to keep them, but it's nice to gather them up and look at them and 
Then I'll put them back in the sand. Now I'm okay with those who collect seashells, as by the next day there will be a new pile on the shore anyway. But I try to leave nature as I found it, with nothing taken, nothing left, except maybe a few footprints. But even they don't last. Few things last long, and some are so fleeting, like the sparkle of wet sand on a beach. As a great philosopher once said, life's a beach, and then you tan. As beautiful as this is, I know I have to pay a price. And it's not the price of camping because it's free. It's the price of uh, spending all day in the sun, especially with this white sand and the reflections. I've been using the sun spray, but it washes off and it only lasts a short time and I gotta keep remembering to putting it on. So chances are I am gonna get burned but the other price is going to be for my camper and my Jeep because the surf is constantly generating salt mist. You know, the, the moisture and the salt keeps coming from the water and everything is covered in it. And it's great that I have a, uh, an aluminum frame on my camper, but there's still, you know, metal, uh, steel nuts and bolts and uh, the underframe. There's bound to be rust. I gotta make sure I go to a car wash when I get out of here. Well, it's not as sunny anymore. Looks like the fog's rolling in. That's a pretty nasty windstorm. Trailer's been shaking. Wind's been howling. Kind of reminds me of the old days with my A-frame. Although this one's a lot more secure in wind. I'm really not concerned with it blowing apart. I did have to uh, secure the solar panel on the roof though. I don't want that to fly off. And these things always happen at an inconvenient time. Look at that. Right at the strike of midnight the winds come. Well, I gotta try to get some sleep. Might not be a good one. Whoa! I felt that move. I guess this will be another test for the fiberglass camper. Ah, fun never ends. It's still windy out there my Lucy light. It was windy all night. The uh, camper shook and wind howled. But it didn't tip over. It's not a good walking on the beach day. I think I have to stay inside for a while. Work on the computer. Oh my god!
God. So friggin' cold. Oh, if you like weather, this is the place to be because there's a lot of it here. I had to switch the trailer around 180 degrees and hook it up to the Jeep again because uh, I've got to face the way I came in. If the sand starts to drift and I get stuck in the sand, I'm in trouble. So uh, I had to move so it's easier to get out of here if it's an emergency. Oh my God. Oh, no collecting seashells today. It's back in the trailer. Well, the day is almost done and it wouldn't be a day without the cooking show. Now, being that I'm on a beach in the south, you'd think it would be something festive, like, I don't know, nachos and guacamole or fajitas. You know, something you'd expect on a beach vacation. However, it's too cold. I'm not sitting out there. I'm stuck in here because a, a cold front came from the north. So I'm not thinking festive food. I'm thinking of something to keep me warm. And so tonight is soup night. And I think... I'll, a lot of people in the north would probably uh, appreciate a, a soup recipe and I'm actually going to try two soup recipes for my viewers because I've got two different recipes and so it's going to be a little bit of a cook-off but let's go with the first one and it's called fast soup and it was provided by Barbara and what she suggested was this some shells pasta shells I've got some macaroni shells here and the second ingredient I love, V8 juice. I mean, who would have thought you'd make soup from V8 juice? I love it. And the third ingredient is cheese. Now, the wonderful thing about this recipe is three simple ingredients. These are things you could probably find in a gas station. You don't have to go to exotic places to get groceries. Uh, Barbara's Fast Soup. That's perfect. Um, it's, it's the perfect example of road food. Now the second recipe was a little bit more complex and it took me a little longer to find the ingredients. It was provided by Caroline and she suggested tomato peanut butter soup. I've never heard the two together so I'm fascinated. I, I really want to know what this tastes like. And the ingredients are not that bad. Let me show you what they are. Campbell's tomato soup. She said specifically Campbell's, so that's what I got. And she said either milk or coconut milk. Well, I went all out and I actually did find some coconut milk. Soya sauce, which I already have. It's one of my basic seasonings. Onion powder, another thing I already had. Now she did suggest curry powder. Well, I don't have that but I do have chili powder and of course peanut butter a staple I always have that now for something green she suggested spinach which I have she also suggested cilantro which I don't have and the final ingredient was crushed peanuts well because I'm in the south I think I got something even better because on a roadside stand, I found boiled peanuts. What could be more southern than boiled peanuts? Basic ingredients, let's get cooking. The big pot is for the fast soup. I added the shell pasta to boiling water. In the other pot, I poured the Campbell's tomato soup. On top of the tomato soup goes the coconut milk. The messy part is the peanut butter. I'm going to have a pot to clean. Now a little soy sauce.
the onion powder, then the chili powder. Back to the fast soup. Once the pasta is cooked, I open the can of V8. Now here's a tip. If you want to avoid a messy pot, just pour the V8 into a Ziploc bag, as the bag is both BPA and dioxin free. With the stove now off, you can heat up the bag of V8 just by letting it sit in the pot. The soup gets heated without any mess to clean up. Back to Caroline's tomato peanut butter soup. First the boiled peanuts, then the spinach. Mix it in and simmer gently. Cook for five minutes or until the spinach is tender. In almost no time at all, I have two soups that look absolutely fantastic. Well, here we go. Two hot soups on a cold day. The first one is Fast Soup by Barbara. And the other one is Tomato Peanut Butter Soup by Caroline. This looks so good. Let's try the Fast Soup first. A little cheesy. It's very light. The V8 does have flavor to it, but I, to me it's a little watery. Might need some thickener. It could use some more spice. The pasta is good. I mean, they complement each other, including the cheese. Yeah, V8 definitely tastes like soup. So if you need something really fast and all you have is a gas station, you could come up with something like this really easily. I like it, Barbara. Now, tomato peanut butter. Wow. That is different. Mmm. It's a lot richer, creamier. Mmm. Oh yeah, this is unique. This is a nice soup. Oh yeah, if you have the time, this is nice. Thank you, Caroline. This is, I, I, I like them both, I really do. In a hurry, you want something flavorful. They're your options. Oh, I got a boiled peanut there. Mmm. The boiled peanuts, mm, they really add something to it as well. My idea. Oh boy, two bowls of soup. I might have to have two beers with this. Well, two soups, it's gonna be only one beer. I'm bloated. Oof. Dragon's milk, that should do it. Ooh, mmm, sweet, bourbon. In the morning, I was off on another adventure. The beach was nice, but I do miss the trees. I hope you enjoyed this video and please follow me as I continue on other travels.